Hola community, this is Pablo Vázquez. I'm trying to say it a bit more slowly because sometimes it doesn't get, it doesn't get picked up. Hola community, not communist, not com, not com is nothing. Hola community, how are you? How is it going? I'm fine. Uh, we are here with the blender today, number 120. The sun is shining here today. Starts spring in the southern hemisphere and autumn in the, this hemisphere over here. So it's uh, time to start afresh. We're gonna go through what's new in Blender. Last week I published one video every day. Yes, every day. Today I publish another video. So I'm I'm being a uh, a good boy here sharing news as soon as I know about them. I talk with the developers and then I just uh, make a quick video. I hope you like the format. It's very short. Sometimes the demos are very simple, but I think it gets to uh, to get the message through to show how much Blender improves every day. All right, improvement uh, or like uh, new features might slow down ish because there is we we now move to Blender. Beacon 2, then 2.91 uh, release, which is it's gonna be released by November-ish, November, December-ish, there will be, um, um, there are many phases, right? We already mentioned this many times in the past, but in case you're new, Blender is split in five phases, the, each Blender release, Beacon 1, we get new features, Beacon 2, those new features get polished, and Beacon 3 is more back fixing, but Beacon 2 is where we are now. No new features, like big new features, just polishing what is already there. Because the earlier you stop the adding new features is when um, you can polish the tools more and you get less fix, less uh, bugs, less reports. I, uh, I've been reading about the, the Blender 2.9 90, not being so stable, not being um, um, like people even recommending 2.83 LTS over 290 and uh, it depends it depends who's asking I mean if, if, if someone that just started with Blender and doesn't really need all the features in 2.90 yeah maybe 283 LTS is a good way to start a lot of documentation is still available for that a lot of videos a lot of training a lot of add-ons pretty much everything is really um, it's 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 good it's good 290 though is gonna get a fax a fix re a fax release. They're gonna fax a release. Um, 2.90.1 is gonna come out this uh, Wednesday. Hopefully this Wednesday you're gonna get the first fix release of the 2.9 series. So let's go through the questions. Uh, let's see how uh, how is the chat here. Um, here um uh, discord server no this blender doesn't have an official discord server they're independent ones but uh, blender itself doesn't have uh, an official one if you want to see the blender communities uh, you can go to blender.org slash um community and uh here you can actually find there is a discord uh, independent it's not blender official but uh there is one and there's plenty more and if you speak a specific language i'm gonna get uh, get to talk with other pals in your community you can do it um, from here you can find in French German Spanish Italian Japanese Malaysian Polish Portuguese Russian Mother Russia Turkish and so much more um, let's see let's what is in the chat I think I didn't enable the slow chat and things are going a bit too fast now but let's keep it that way let's see how it goes there are questions there is a thread with questions but I also have a threads with actual uh, updates that I want to that I want to share with you what what's new in blender I'm gonna I'm gonna go through them uh, rather fast but um uh, no slow chat you prefer no slow chat um I mean it's hard to read this um, that Discord server is quite toxic though. Ah, there is toxic communities everywhere. I think uh, that it just needs to find a, a, a niche. Uh, I don't know about the toxicism. I've been doing a uh, Twitch this weekend in Spanish and uh, that was actually quite fun and I didn't get a lot of uh, toxic there. So I think just the community just move around. Um, all right, let's get uh, to it with the um, with the updates. So it goes through all of the updates that I have here because we just started autumn. I'm gonna catch up with all the things that I want to talk to you. Some of them I already made videos about, but this is everything that I haven't shared since the uh, since I switched from uh, Mondays to Fridays and I did other um, 
other uh, like this changing the smaller videos but um let's see let's uh ui so let's start with the user interface it's a, it's a bunch of things that happened the uh, last week let's open blender here um i'm gonna mention mainly just the features and then if it's needed show them but some of them you don't really need to show much um i can even get my brother here and then ciao brother change sides too here so there is a in the in the file browser now when you uh, open or when you want to save a file you're gonna get um, this um, file browser options here shown like uh, the sizes and the type of uh, of, of uh, listing like thumbnails or list or details now they have their own buttons which is super nice because in 2.7 uh, 2 this used to be inside of the menu so you always had to like click and see um, that is uh, that's a nice update also with the filtering before there was a popover that you click and then you click filter and uh, this is just much uh, much much faster actually let's see Let, let's show it in comparison let's show let's open blender and uh, blender 2.90 and let's see how it is because this is a small thing but a pretty useful one okay let me get this here execute execute i like how in english uh, sounds like you're gonna kill the file you're gonna execute the file so um, um the file browser in this is just very big 1.3 three let's make it smaller so this is blender 2.9 and if you open a file or, or save a file here in 2.9 you're gonna see that the um the buttons were always a popover and that was a bit uh, a bit slow because if you just want to know if filtering is on or off there was no way to know now you can actually just um in the in the new file browser that i have somewhere here you see, in the new one, you actually know when it's a filter or not. And the same for the, for the types. This is how it used to be. And you have to go here and change the type from here. Whereas now it's all uh, visible here in one. So that's super nice. Super um, handy. Let's move on with the next um, update. This is just, this is a tiny one. It's a user interface improvement that uh, do not display negative zero float values. So things look a bit cleaner a bit nicer when you don't have a gazillion points um, what's the point of uh, showing negative anyway if it's all zero then um, for example there is a new update it's a smaller one but it makes the torus um, UI that it used to be like this now more organized so this is a nice little patch that makes things a bit more consistent so before after um what is going on in the chat paulo show your projects please i don't have any projects i was actually <laughs> well i actually i i was um playing if you go here you're gonna see some sintel uh files that i was playing with um but uh but yeah look at this this is sintel in 2.91 but no no spoiler alert there is no sintel 2 coming uh let's move on <laughs> transform the this is another improvement that i wrote down because it's important in the case you want to do um you want to do a Pyth uh, for example python add-ons uh, or you use python add-ons this is handy especially if you want to um, reassign keys or if you want to just change your key map there were some transform um shortcuts that were hard coded not anymore so now you can actually tweak more things and to see which ones specifically is um, you're gonna have to go to the commit logs. Uh, Auto IK change uh, chain uh, ah yeah chain length up and down page up and down with the wheel mouse um, and the constraint plane. This is also something that it wasn't there before. I think you still have to, uh, some of them are still hard coded, like if you transform and you press G and then K, it makes sense. So uh, to have uh, the X, because it's the X axis, why would you like to change that? But in some uh, cases, it's good to have them 
to be able to change hard-coded hotkeys. Let's see. Um, move on. Enable auto constraint with middle mouse shift. That's a small, a small trick. Um, enable auto constraint when you middle shift and middle mouse is gonna do the auto constraint for uh, transforming. Uh, the witches have better um, anti-aliasing and this one is not in being used anywhere yet as far as I know but now you can have temperature units in Blender so if you make crazy add-ons that are um, that are using these, uh, these, these units like Celsius or Freedom <laughs> You're gonna uh, here. It, the, yeah, it's initially supported is Celsius, Kevin, and uh, Freedom uh, units. So that way you can, you can. Uh, I don't know what would you use it for. For like uh, physics, temperature, fire stuff. Let's move on. The um, uh, UI property search. That's another thing that I, I wrote down here. But I made a video about it, so I don't even have to show it anymore. I can actually just go to YouTube.com/slash/BlenderFoundation, and uh, well, actually, you are in this channel right now. Up. Look, there is someone with the Blender username that joined in 2006, and uh, it would be so nice if you can, you know. Let us use the the name. Now we have to call Blender Foundation, which is incorrect because it's not the Blender Foundation only. It's Blender and the Blender Institute and the Blender anything. Search. Search properties. I made a whole video about it, which you can uh, watch. It was published uh, last week, but um, yeah, basically it just uh, shows the new features on search. It's... Um, there has been some bug fixes since then, but it's pretty much the same as it was. Then um, more features in the image editor. That's another video that I published during the week. You probably have seen it already, but it's a uh, it's here. It's image editor drawing refactor. And just as a PSA public service announcement, the um, the feature that I show here, where in the render it looks like this. There is a bug currently, as of like now, that um, it's this is broken. So it looks like it used to look in the in the old times. Unfortunately, unfortunately. So that is a that is a um, it's a it's a bug. I reported the bug. Actually, maybe I even have a notification here um, that here I reported the bug today. Image editor alpha leg -like bloom not showing properly again. So. This is a bug I reported today from within Blender, so it has all my information on the Linux that I use and the Quadro GTR RTX graphics card and with a with a blend file, demo blend file. So this is a good practice on how to show, how to share, how to report the bug. Then um, Jeroen mentioned that it's been working, is working on it, and he found some things that could lead into finding the root of the issue. And also that if you render, save to uh, OpenEXR and then load it back, the bloom is drawn correctly. So there is some fishy thing in there, but it's uh, super nice to see your own working on it. All right, let's move on. Uh, let me put this, the music. Let's move on into this section of shading. There is one feature that I can show you now that actually it's a new option somebody was asking about new notes or new note settings well this is a new it's not a new note but it's a new note setting so the principal bsdf uh, node here now has an emission strength setting so uh, in the past you have to use the emission value uh, um, maybe as as a, as an strength, but it wasn't really um, it wasn't very flexible, and also you couldn't connect it with other um, with other properties. You couldn't drive it properly from here, but now you can. Now you just change the uh, strength from here, and it should work in EV and on cycles. So as you can see here, um, this is just should just work. If I had ah, because I'm not in render, ha! Huh. So you see, super nice because you can have the actual color, so you can do like um, like a color on one value and then just control the strength separately. 
super nice all right let's uh, move on that was a short one but a sweet one cycles there is a new um, um, report when you're rendering the time report for blender data synchronization so this is uh, important when you're debugging when you want to know what happened with the um, with the actual render time where did the render time go well now this allows to more easily access time information about how long cycles spent synchronizing objects from ev evaluated depth graph on blender side to its own structures a lot of uh, fancy words in there like evaluated depth graph on blender own structures but basically it means that the timer is going to be um more clear and easier for developers and for users to see what's what's slowing down things synchronizing data from blender to cycles or to other render engines i hope hopefully other render engines can uh, benefit from this well this is only for cycles at the moment but uh could help um sdr i'm glad people found my patch useful hey did you make the patch of the of the Yes, actually, as Strand, the, the creator of this patch, Alex Strand, is on the chat here, and I would send you a, 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 a virtual hug if I could, but let's cheers for you. Thank you for the patch. Congratulations. Is it your first patch in Blender? Um, it's if so it's uh welcome to the party now uh watch out because now that uh, you got the shout out people are gonna start asking you for features and you know if you want to have uh, more fun with uh, shaders which you probably uh <laughs> want you know in eevee or in uh, rendering and cycles there is a whole bunch of um the workboard you can see all the features that um that are around that people have been posting like they could get some attention but uh yes uh thanks for the feature and uh sorry if you get too many feature requests now <laughs> or fixing issues you know fixing issues also is uh, is uh, just as helpful or even more i would say it's even more helpful let's uh move on so let's move on with the uh, sculpting okay so here is a whole list features some of them are even from blender from before blender 2.9 so i'm gonna i'm gonna be um quick about them i'm gonna try to share them and be um be fast about it so okay let's switch i'm gonna have a drink of mate even though outside is like 24 degrees celsius this is and this is hot but yeah let's let's see Let's move on. Just for my for my throat, my teenager throat. Let's see. First one, split box mask into its own operator. What does it mean? The box mask is now uh, is its own operator, which is also its own uh, its own tool now. Then, cloth brush pin simulation boundary. I think this is in 2.9. Yeah, because it's from July. So this is 2.90 even, but this I never actually mentioned this feature anywhere. And today I want to, um, this is the beginning of autumn in this year and spring in, uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. By the way, if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, you could celebrate today by watching the open movie Spring, you know? And uh, you know what's the name of this guy? His name is Autumn. It's called Autumn. So, yes, you should celebrate. I'm going to share you with you the link to the video. So you put it there and you watch it with the family, with the kids, with you alone, uh, crying in a dark cave, anywhere. It's a good occasion to watch an open movie project. Have, is anybody here ever done like, a, like an open movie marathon? I have never done it. But uh, if you are if you are crazy enough to do it, um, it's probably only gonna take like an hour or so. Uh, here in the Blender channel, there is um, we have the open movies playlist where you should see official open movies here. Would be nice if it would actually tell you the duration. It doesn't say the duration, but you can start here and you can start from. Uh, from the bottom up, Elephant's Dream, Big Bug Bunny, Tears of Steel, Sintel, Caminandes 2, 
You could put them coming on this one even if you want. Cosmos, Glass Half, Coming on this tree, Agent, Daily Drifts, Hero, Spring, Coffee Run. What a marathon. What a marathon. And there is more to come. Let's see. And yeah, you can organize a screening actually. You could. Because it's all uh, open source. Open content. Let's uh, move on with more features. So there is, um, so the mention, uh, the option that I mentioned, cloth brush, pin simulation, uh, boundary property. This was already in, I think in 2.9 and it allows you to pin certain areas um, of the mesh, like the boundary areas of your mesh. So this is with the anchor stroke disabled and this is with the anchor stroke enabled. So as you can see, the borders of the cloth simulations are pinned which is super, super handy. So you don't have, um, so it, how does it even work? Because where is it pulling? Like if the plane was plane before, it means that the tension, or maybe there were some crumbles. I think if you, yeah, I think there were some. Because otherwise where, where is gonna get the room for for stretching this? Yeah, maybe you need to, to make it a bit uh, more racked before. Uh, moving on to the next, um, oh, elasticity. Yeah, good point, Ma Maori. Elasticity. Um, the next option that I have here on my list of unsorted Blender updates is uh, in sculpting option to lock the rotation in the post brush scale deform mode. This was requested by. <laughs> okay, that's super nice. What was the name again of the feature? It's like option to lock the rotation in the post brush. Oh, so the rotation stays there, but you can uh, you can change the scaled form. Uh, you can change it in post brush mode. So I think that is that makes it more consistent. So the rotation is there. You don't change it, but you only move it um, in. Uh, you only scale it basically, you're locking the rotation. But then why not just locking also the scale and keeping the... No, because it's a scale deform, doesn't make sense. If it was a combined... Yeah, okay, okay, I see it, I see it. Um, let's continue. The next um, feature, which I also think it's in 2.9, it's the sharpen mesh filter, curvature smoothing and intensify details. Sharpening, yes, actually we have seen this already. So this is without any sharpening, with some sharpening. It is with some sharpening and, and uh, softing. Uh, uh, smooth iterations 3 and with 7. Nice. And then uh, intensify details. Displace the vertices of creases and valleys in the direction opposite to its neighbor average. So it intensifies high frequency details in those areas, producing more noisy and sharp edges. So um, this is by default. This is what you get with more detail preservation. And uh, actually for a cartoon, for this, this looks pretty promising. For, for like if you're making rocks, um, this with some uh, some kind of normal tinting or um, pointiness yes I'm hoping for the day we get pointiness in Eevee there I said it before you ask for it <laughs> let's uh, continue so sharpen mesh filter coverture smoothing and intensify details super handy cloth brush filter collisions yes this was already uh, implemented in 2.9 it was actually one of the very big features that you can collide. You have collisions. So yes, this actually you probably have seen it already. Cloud brush simulation area property is a is a new property that allows you to limit the uh, simulation to a specific area. So in this case, you're only affecting this area. There is like a circle around the brush. I don't know if you notice. Very subtle. And uh, yes, so you can basically limit it per area. Next, boundary brush. Again, there is so many features that I haven't talked about actually in the past. It's from July, so it also is in 2.9. Um, 
the uh, feature itself, it's a boundary brush, so you can basically... Did it, this is make it to 2.9? But it basically allows you to, to model, to like fold parts of your texture by grabbing it from the boundary. And from there you can, um, as you can see, you can drag it, you can scale it proportionally. And even with some bending. Interesting. I guess for like modeling cloth and stuff, it's, it's, it's handy to have it. Um, this is what the brush does in corners where there is no topology of parallel groups. It's not perfect and it can be improved in future versions, but I consider it acceptable for the initial version. Uh, okay, this is super handy. Nice. It's basic. I think uh, Sculpt is going to end up being uh, some kind of modeling um, mode in the future. Which, actually now, okay, I'm gonna mention this feature later, but uh, you can model with multiple objects and switch between them much easily now. Let's see. So, uh, this option, option to mask front faces only using lasso and box mask. So, it limits the um, box and the lasso masking to only the front faces or uh, go through. So, the option is... Uh, this adds a property that checks the normals of each vertex against the view direction to decide if they should be masked. Similar to the front faces only, option works for brushes. So, handy, super handy. Otherwise, it will look always in the in the back, in the back direction. Um, it will look, it will go through the mesh like it was hollow. All right, more options. Sculpt, option to not modify hidden face sets in face sets edit. So when you're editing the face sets, it's uh, to not modify the ones that are hidden. Okay, that comes in handy as well. This also is a very old uh, patch from June and uh, it should be, it was committed in August. So this probably didn't make it to 2.990 because August 11 is very close to the end of um, I'm not sure about uh, in which version is that one. Ah, maybe I can see here. Because added a commit and then you can see the branch and the branch was master. Oh no, branch branch 290 into master. So it was in 290. Cool. Um, let's see. Expose edit face as a tool. Yes, this is, this is actually in 291. This is a new tool that allows you to um, to here. So this is a new tool. In sculpt mode, uh, you're gonna find that some of the tools that I'm, I'm, I'm showing here, they are not available yet. That's because um, be because just to, to prevent um, like uh, people making documentation or tutorials showing features that are not even um, final, but they look like they are final. Um, it's better if, if the feature it's available for the, uh, for like everybody in the UI when it's finished. And finished means everything also including the um, the interface uh, icons, for example. Experimental. In the experimental section, which is going to show up if you have the developer extras option here in the display panel, you're going to find a, an, an option in new features that is called tools with missing icons. Once you enable it, you're going to see that there are more um, tools that show up here that have no icons. And this um, is going to show like pretty much all kind of work in progress tools. But it's it's important to show like when, you know, when it's going to something is final or when it's not. Because it doesn't look nice to show Blender and shows a bunch of known icons. So in this case, the um, edit is called edit face edit face set here it's a it's a new tool that allows you to uh, once you have face sets once you've been drawing the face set so let's go into sculpting and then enable the face sets draw face sets for example and once you have these face sets you can edit them with the edit face set so you can expand it you can uh, shrink it and uh, that's pretty much what you can do at the moment, but um, it's a new tool. Maybe it could be combined with other tools, but for now, 
this is the the current option uh the boundary branch that i shown before is also available here there is a new option for multi-race displacement eraser and uh for that we can see it here pablo Dovarro made a nice video where you can see how he is kind of rim it, it, it's a it's a kind of sculpt layers because you can basically um, in multi-res you have you you build like another layer of of the of of uh, edit and then um, but with subdivisions and then you can sculpt and remove parts of that you are erasing multi-res info data so it is kind of similar it's not the same though because you are adding subdivisions when maybe you don't want subdivisions but that is uh, for the snapshot feature that still has to come let's uh, continue so boundary brush follow off and offset this is another option for the boundary brush so allows you to have this like a fall off so you can with a curve you can define the um, this kind of <laughs> how to describe it it's displacing and moving the I, I don't even know how to describe this feature because it's it's may is it using face sets maybe and it's not being shown here um, But let's see let, let's read the description for once Let's add the boundary fall off type and boundary offset to control how the fall off of the boundary brush is applied Boundary origin offset is the same concept as the post origin offset in the post brush. It is multiplier uh, It is a multiplier that adds extra length to the brush radius to locate the deformation pivot further from the boundary without affecting the fall off okay so it's like it adds a kind of pivot so when you transform it okay it's different from the fall off which makes sense yes it's a lot of freedom because the fall off it's one area but the pivot point is another area so you can do this crazy crazy um, crazy stuff. I, I wish we had more brushes by default that you could have this because I can see myself using this um, like if you want to make this for like a dress or a um, some kitchen stuff plants anything all right multi-resolution base mesh sculpting this uh, this has been added a while ago as well this adds an option to the multi-res modifier to sculpt directly on the base mesh while previewing the displacement of the higher subdivision this is insane this is a this is a big one because as you can see here this is a very highly detailed uh, mesh right you add like a like here she's adding details on the whole mesh but the grabbing now is grabbing the mesh using the base mesh so the base mesh has a lot less polygons so the cloth brush uh, in this case the one that is using here the cloth brush is uh, faster to calculate because it doesn't have to move a gazillion uh, polygons it only has to move the ones in the bottom uh, layer this is uh, crazy this is super super uh, like to next level um, feature that's amazing. Pablo is really a genius. So so it's brilliant. It's brilliant with the with with the with the multi res. Like using these options. So you see, it's again, it's another. Um, it, it's it's another one of those examples where you can see how Blender's own tools, when mixed properly, can be super powerful in in in, le in thing in levels that we don't even expect but um so when when adding new features it's not that you have to copy other softwares because blender has its own tools that uh, maybe if you combine them you can get even more impressive results um let's see sculpt filter orientation options so for the filters um you have scale ah world you can scale in ah, in different coordinates so local global or view space for uh, for the mesh filter ah, that's pretty nice next um 
invert smooth so there is a, a new setting in the invert smooth or like in the smooth uh, brush where you invert basically the effect and you get kind of a the opposite of smoothing which is enhance it's uh, adding details or detailifying so called sharpening exactly david s sharpening thank you for the and the oxo 2 gamer um and uh, three Arton and everybody here in the chat for uh jumping in sharpening i didn't get the the word i couldn't i didn't remember the word all right there is another mesh filter to erase displacement so you can um, not only do it with a brush but also with a mesh filter so you can apply it to the whole mesh is the option that we um, that I was talking about before now you actually have it as a mesh filter so cool that that there is mesh filters um, that apply to the whole mesh or to the mask out and not just um, for brushes so let's see enable cloud simulation target for pose and boundary oh yes this was actually wasn't this in no it wasn't in 2.90 oh my gosh yes this this is uh this is another one of those other features that is just mind-blowing because you can use uh <laughs> cloud simulation when when posing a character so you're basically just getting uh, close simulations for free while you uh, while you post stuff or while you're using the the um, the boundary brush remember the one we just saw before where you can just pull things and get these shapes well that plus cloth sim and here is how you would transform a character with cloth okay that is just brilliant wow how can one person do all of this? <laughs> well, I mean, there is also people that made the rest of Lender, right? But the, the, the tool itself and um, it's crazy, crazy. Um, let's see that orientation modes to the cloth filter. Sculpt, add orientation modes to cloth filter. What does it mean? It means that you can now change the orientation Ah, for view. Oh, ha, that is so cool. So uh, the orientation mode in this case, for example, is set to view. So re depending on the view, <laughs> um, you can move around the view and the simulation will use that as like gravity or like a, a transformation. Uh, <laughs> that's so cool. So you can really mess with it. So exactly, gravity equals camera. Peanut B said it in the chat, but yeah. It was, um, uh, yeah, it's just funny. You can keep going forever, basically. You just rotate the view, let the cloth fall, rotate, rotate. So if you don't know what to do on a Sunday, here, go view and um, view view gravity. The, the, the gravity view filter. I don't know. Awesome. Let's uh, continue. Cloth snake hook brush. Okay, this is more recent. This is from one month ago. And so it's definitely not in 2.90 and it's gonna be in 2.91 is the snake brush the one that is just like snake shaped um, with cloud simulation so yeah you get awesome and you can you can pull things you can draw like ah oh, that's so cool that is so cool it's yeah implements it's it makes more natural looking folds than any of the other deformation modes it makes sense because when you when you change your clothes when you here you usually like pull in one direction you're even being pulled by not just the one point but by many points uh, so so cool and um, okay I'm getting close to the end I have four more features and one that I didn't add yet um, Sculpt face set gestures tools again sculpt face set gesture tools ah yes so when you you can make face sets by using gestures such as lasso or box you can also do a box and you can draw a box face sets so faces are getting even uh, getting 
even more impressive. And this one here, it was a request. Um, I did a live stream in Spanish with a with a um, um, with a sculpting artist, and she mentioned that the one thing that she was still going to other softwares um, for, um, and she really missed this feature, was being able to have a face set and extract the um, the object or that face set into a new mesh. Now you can actually do it. There is a new operator that it will extract the um, the the face set and even add a little like um, a modifier, a solidify modifier around it, so you can actually control how thick it is. That is uh, that is sick. Yes. Would would be nice if. If you could control the the width of it like after you like the operator could be like execute and then um, and then enter like a width mode where you can maybe control how width how wide is gonna be or not what do you think um, then it would make it slow in in the way that you don't just extract and then move things around but uh, but every time you extract you will have to uh, set the width but maybe maybe it's a uh, maybe it's a good um, a good thing to do to make it more interactive let me know in the comments below sideways uh, everywhere it is a, sh a solidify modifier Duke Togo um, Sar OS is yes, it adds a modifier, but then if you want to change the width, you have to go to the modifier, which can be slow in in a bit slow, in a way. And um, sculpt enable pen pressure for scrape and fill area radius. Okay, pen pressure. So where's my pen? Here. Uh, pen pressure. Yeah, no, <laughs> I have nothing to show here, but so so cool. All right, and I think with that, I already have all the features from Sculpting covered and I'm also like 15 minutes away from the end of the show. I still have some features that I wanted to share. I, I could either just share them all now or do q and um, I mean, let's see how many questions are there. And maybe if there's just too many questions, maybe I should just answer the Q&A and then let, then let, oh gee, yeah, 49 comments. Um, and then I could probably um, do Q&A now and then share the features or do both and then do an extra long episode. And then next week we start from scratch. Um, Share, share, people, Q&A, Q&A, okay, there are mixed opinions and 50, 49 people wrote comments here, so in, you know, um, to be, to be nice, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna make a space here in my list, so <laughs> basically this is how I write down, is like, for next week, and then I, I should make also independent videos of some of these features. Extra long episode. No, because I also have to do it in Spanish. In Espanol for my Spanish friends. Um, let's see. First question of the day. Let's see. Um, where is my music? Here. I wanted to switch. Like this. All right. First question of the day. Chris Dude says, "Good morning, Pablo. It's 10 a.m. for me. To know what it is for you. For me, it's 5:50, so it's almost 6 p.m. Um, is there any chance that cycles could receive an option to be unbiased? I recently learned how to use Maya in college class and found that the images rendered on Arnold look more beautiful than what I achieved in Blender Cycles." And after some research, I found that the reason is because Arnold is one of the several unbiased render engines, while Cycles is a biased engine. Luxcore is unbiased, but it's an entirely different interface, and it doesn't feel as fully implemented and maintained. Hey, no, Luxcore is actually very very well maintained. It's, uh, it's actually um, one of the most active render engines out there, open source. So, but uh, yeah, but the integration, of course, Blender, Cycles, it's... It comes with, so it's just maybe it feels uh, closer. 
So yeah, of course, we shout out to the amazing people who keep Blender so slick and smooth. And the answers here, actually, um, Cycles is unbiased and it's very similar to render you mentioned. It uses the same algorithm. I think you need more practice and you will improve your renders. Uh, Looks Core, which is free and open source, is also unbiased and render algorithm in the same as Cycles. The difference is mostly because it's a spectral render which gives you dispersion and other effects impossible in other renders, either biased or unbiased. Sorry for my English, don't be sorry, actually, it's just perfect. Um, Boris says, sorry to be the guy, but avoid using other software names. Uh, it's okay. I mean, Blender community, it's about the community. It's, if, if you go to the developer of Blender.org or, well, yeah, but Blender community, it's more. I guess we can be a bit more chill about it. I mean, um, but um, yeah, the, the fact that it looked more beautiful or not, it can be many, so many things, right? It could be like the color space is different or it's ACES is using assets um, maybe by default or um, the, the it, maybe it also has presets, material presets by default where if you want to get the same results in cycles, you have to add a bunch of um, nodes yourself, which are not, um, are not actually... Um, in uh, cycles, unfortunately. The next question, Bruno Ortolan. Hi, Pablo. Thank you for bringing, bringing every new feature on Blender to our knowledge. Thank you. Do you know if light linking for cycles will be on the roadmap soon? And also, please, everybody send some love to this task. Um, actually, uh, this is this is up to date. So what you see here is um, is really up to date. Um, Everybody is giving some love. I think uh, even I ha I gave some love here. You can see it. <laughs> you can really believe. And um, it's uh, it's something apparently not so easy to do. I want to know. I want to I want to believe. Um, but yeah, I think the more attention it gets, the more the more love it gets, the better. Um, it's on the roadmap, but it's not so high priority. We need more developers, that's for sure. More Cycles developers. And more developers that can help um, take the time out of other developers. The Blender Cycles developers are also working on other areas. So if they could actually, you know, use their time for Cycles, that would be awesome. Light linking is on my top one. Not even in the top two, three, faster, no, no. It's on my top one of Cycles feature requests that I have personally. And for Eevee. Because Blender Internal had it. Blender Internal. So, Sinedine uh, says, Hi, Pablo. I love. I hope you guys uh, put some focus on rigging tools, especially facial rigging and shape keys. Blender required the mesh topology to be the same, and there is no live editing between the source mesh and its duplicate. Um, it needs to ignore topology check and only take vertex co order into account. So we won't have to duplicate thousands of meshes, but only the facial parts so the scene becomes light. Um, it's important for FACS based rigging when it's shapekeys editor 2.0. It looks like you will be a great great um, person to have in the animation team, in the rigging team so um in the actually in the rigging in the animation and rigging module you're gonna see you're gonna learn who are people that are uh, involved uh, especially Severin that is the main developer in this area but um, um I'll, I'll go it too but if you see Severin around you can ask or you can also join the in blender chat uh, blender dot chat you're gonna see here in browse channels you have the animation channel and inside the animation channel there is people discussing the future of animation in blender and uh, for that it would be super nice to have you on board uh, so yes please join the discussion and uh, the more people are um, contributing with their ideas the better especially if you have experience like from the industry and uh, with other softwares Animation dash module channel um, two. That's where the coders live. Yes. Good. Good point, uh, Joseph. Um. So, next question. Matter form. 
3D it. Since there isn't a comprehensive list online, does the dev have a spreadsheet of all the key binds so I can fix the mess that happens when don't have a number pad? And yes, I don't know about the simulate number pad, but it screws up other key binds. Um, no, a spreadsheet of all the key bindings, no. Um, I suggest you to use the blender, like if you want to know what's, what would you be messing with uh, when doing that, when changing settings, you can do, you can search by key binding and then search for like numpad and then, um, and then num numpad and then the um, numpad space. Six, for example, these are all the ones that affect six and just search by, by key, by shortcut, by key binding. That way you can see what are you messing with. Next uh, question, Puffertron. Hi Pablo, is there any update on the status of the fracture modif- Wait, I remembered. You can actually look at the, there is no like a comprehensive list online or spreadsheet, but you can actually look at the Python file itself of the, um, of the, of, of this um, file, which is actually in Blender scripts presets key config. So let, let's see if I can find it. So it's Blender and then I have Blender master bean scripts. Um, what was it? Um, it was here. Presets key config. So presets key config and then here blender so if you open this uh it's a it's a text file it's a python file so you can basically just look at um the settings this is just for the ui but actually the other one should be the keymap data itself right yeah here you have everything here you have everything so operator you can see a template item select options and you can see transform rotate and here you can search for numpad so this is the closest to a uh, spreadsheet that um that you can get maybe someone could make could yeah exactly Plachenko in the chat says that could uh, <clears throat> parse that into a spreadsheet that would be a good uh, exercise remember it's in uh, scripts presets key config key map data Next uh, question, Puffer Drone. Is there any update to the status of the Fracture Modifier build and other physics features like full interactivity, cloth, rigid body, soft body particles? Would all that be implemented in everything knows in the future? Um, so, questions. Um, the Fracture Modifier, note that I know. Actually, here's uh, Fred is pointing to a build from last year, from 2.7. Unfortunately, it hasn't been updated. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I said it's less than in focus. Yes. Uh, yeah, there is no, as far as I know, there is no developer working on it right now. This started as an independent project, actually. The developer Scorpion81, Martin Felke, was working on this, um, but he's no longer working on it. So it's hard for another developer to jump in and just start grabbing that, um, that project. So hopefully Michael, Martin, sorry. I confused. Martin um, will get to work on it at eventually. That's uh, the pity with the independent project. But sometimes it works out. Like the all the, the Pablo de Barro development on Sculpt he started as an independent. And then he got hired by Blender. And then he could spend full time, uh, more than full time on all the features. Then and other physics formulation uh, features like uh, full interactivity. Um, this is, it will be eventually part of everything nodes, but it's, it's going to take a while. It's not going to be in 291 for sure. 292, I doubt that we'll see all of those implemented, um, in one release. It's just, just too much. Um, Tons fans said, Hey Pablo, thanks for the awesome EV motion blur. <laughs> Any updates about faster or real time viewport compositor? I love the compositor already. Also, you saw the 3080 benchmarks. Thank you and take care. Yes. Um, so no, no news about the, the real-time viewport compositor. The focus right now of the EV developer is to bring EV or Blender itself to use Vulkan instead of OpenGL. That's the main uh, 
work at the moment and because there is only one developer working on that it will take time remember you can speed up things by joining the blender development fund and being part of the 4,902 supporters that make blender develop faster so yes um that's the only answer i have at the moment sorry the um Benchmarks, yeah, actually, there is a thread Francesco showed me today, it was Blender leaked 3080 benchmark or something like that. <laughs> so a website um, published this, leaked Blender benchmarks show GeForce RTX 3090 over 80, 80% faster than the 2080 Ti. And uh, yes, so it's so cool that they are using our site, the Blender uh, open data website, with um as like leak leak data yeah because all of that here actually if you want to run the um, the benchmark here if you want to run the benchmark this um you can uh, upload your um uh, your results and it's all uh, anonymous you, you can link it if you can make it non-anonymous by linking your um, data you can log in and see your own your own uh your own results but if you don't want to save your own results you can actually just upload it uh, anonymous and it's gonna um, yeah you can just basically see here all the GeForce uh, 3080 results and if we're gonna group them by um, maybe device type now in this case it's really just the one but maybe as a device name so there has been 54 benchmarks Oh, nice. But I don't want good. I want optics. If you're going to do this test, if you are lucky enough to have an RTX 3080 or like even a 2070, 2080, um, use optics. It's so much faster if you compare it. And um, and let, let's, uh, let's device type. So you see optics, it's um, with the 3080, it's almost half the time well, maybe 40% than, um, than CUDA. So if you're going to do a test, do them with optics. So much faster. And the results eventually should show up here. Actually, this is 3080 here, but it's because the results are done with CUDA, you see? And the other ones are optics. So even with CUDA, it's just as fast as a 2080 with optics. So if you have an RTX 3080 laying around, just, you know, gathering dust, um consider rendering with getting the benchmark run with optics and uh, publish the results um but yeah super nice and this is from uh linux tech tips right still blows my mind that they use uh that they use blender for their benchmarks let's see regarding an all an android version of blender let me predict that answer with actually you asked before so somebody has been asking about <laughs> Blender on Android. Did I answer that already? Yeah, I probably answered. And how does this person remember which episode I talked about it? I have no idea. But yes, there is a version of Android, uh, uh, Blender for Android, really old. And it's completely just a proof of concept that it can run, but it's very old. Actually, you can, you can get it in Blender release and or even yeah you have to google it but it was it was somewhere here it was demo and then android here download the blender.org demo android and then you can get the apk from 2013 and you can play with uh, blender on your android i played with it on uh, samsung s3 and now they're like 11 so it should run uh, much faster uh, it rendered the, the default cube in two seconds for those asking, wondering. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm way over time now. Um, I think uh, let's do three more questions and then I'm going to call it a day because I completely forgot. Time passed by. So, hey, could you please share some recent info about these upcoming modules? Particles and physics and new vertex paint in Sculpt. Especially when, they, when will they arrive? Production, not beta. With the new and fast vertex paints, it could be possible to use instead of our textures and UV mapping. 
Um, however, for smaller details, it will be an overkill having dense geometry. Thus, our will feature dino, dino Tintopo and Multi-Res. Do you plan Pitex integration? Pitex, no, at the moment there is no plans, as far as I know. Um, it will support multi-resolution, yes, Dine, din, din topo, I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Um, Vertex Paint, it's enabled at the moment only if you uh, turn on experimentals. Skull Vertex Color, this option um, should show up here. Um, the problem with the Skull Vertex Colors is that it's still not very clear about the workflow and it requires also work in the other vertex color mode so i don't know if it's gonna make it for sure it's not gonna be for 291 but for 292 maybe um should be um but yes next um particles and physics notes the there will be a, a, f a work in progress which is also still available in the experimental area but it's not gonna be uh, final for 291 The next comment, is it true that Particle Nose may be released in the summer with Blender 3? <laughs> Where did you read that? The planned release of Blender 3 will be August 2021. There could be changes. Um, I would expect there will be Particle stuff already sooner. Around... Um, around... Um, 2.92. But... It will take... Time. Okay, I can't uh, favor it, but I think I reached the one. Okay, the last one here. Recently, I um, really interesting add-on was released to Eevee, the Screen Space Global Illumination add-on. I've been using um, it since, and it's pretty good. However, it's still not a proper solution for GI and many scenes. My question is, is there any plan to implement proper GI and Eevee other than Irradiance volumes? Um, not anytime soon. The, the add-on is very very interesting, very fun, it's a hack, um, the, the developer even mentioned that it's a hack, it's basically just replacing all the principal VSDFs um, with others, with some settings tweaked, but yeah, it's, it's a hack, and there won't be any implementation, any new implementation, because as I mentioned, the focus is right now on moving Blender from OpenGL to Vulkan, that would allow for way more um new features many many more new features um from baking to um faster performance you know multi-threading and much more and it's more modern so yeah all right thank you everybody for watching uh sorry for not answering your all the questions okay the last one will you ever do a lighting tutorial yes i want to do a lighting tutorial with the with with sintel with that show that i shown before um, that you do lighting for the Blender Animation Studio. Um, yeah, I do lighting for the. I did lighting for the Blender Animation Studio in the past. I don't know if I, probably I'm gonna be. I mean, we always need people anyway, and I, I know and I know how to shift a lamp, so a light. So maybe I'm gonna be part of the team. I don't know. Nowadays, I'm full time working on Blender uh, communication and Blender UI, the user interface team. All right. When do, will the bevel node and amino occlusion be added to optics? I don't know exactly. Uh, this is this is something that it gets added by an in, in independent developer by Nvidia, so it's not um, it's out of uh, our hands. I don't know exactly. Maybe I could ask. It's called Patrick. Maybe if I find it online, find them online, I can ask. But um, but yeah. Thank you everybody for staying until the end for watching. Still daylight outside. And um, it's it's been a it's been a nice beginning of sp I I don't know why I keep feeling maybe because I I lived uh, 21 years in in the southern hemisphere where 21st of of September meant spring like and when you hear the song by uh, Earth Waves on Fire uh, like uh, do you remember well for me it was always like a happy song yeah it's 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 a spring song but no actually it talks about the winter too <laughs> about um about not winter but autumn all right it's been fun to go back to mondays it's a it makes mondays a bit less mondays so that makes it really fun today i went through all of the updates i even show a little 
um, of the features that I actually made videos about. How so how did it feel for you? Um, if you're watching this video after I published it, after it's not live anymore. Um, also, I'm curious to see, like, was it boring? Is it fun to do a little bit of both? A bit less Q&A and a bit more on the feature side. I um, I find it I find it just fun. And the thing that I missed with making short videos is that there are sometimes small features, like the one that uh, here, like uh, our friend was here in the chat, the developer that added the emission um, slider for the principal BSDF. He made that feature and probably I'm not going to make a whole video about it because it will take 10 seconds to just to show it. But it's nice because here you can give it a shout out. He was watching the stream live. Everybody cheered. Everybody happy. So uh, it's nice to have a little bit of both. What do you think about doing this? A little bit of both. Tomorrow I'm going to make another quick video with some more features that are coming and uh, hopefully you're gonna keep doing it during the during the week. Um, this week I, I actually worked from home so that's why it was easier for me to just wake up, make a video and then continue with my day but um, but uh, maybe a mix is, is fun. All right so you know the drill five four three two and one goes with goes with everything it's been fun see you next week same place same time stay tuned this week for more feature videos and uh go download blender share with your friends your mom your dad your everybody ciao <laughs>